Howdy, AP Preco. We are continuing our transformation notes. So I think we're still in section 3.6 um, because the 3.8 introduces tangent and then 3.11 introduces the other three parent functions. Um, and we're still doing stuff with sine. Um, but what made sense to me was to do all the transformations together. Um, okay, so they're telling us we have a transformation um, in the following order, a phase shift left. So we're moving to the left, which means we will say plus um, we will have theta plus pi, and an amplitude of 5, so that's going to come out front. Oh, and it's sine. Okay, so it's 5 times sine, um, and then a reflection over the x-axis. So if we're going to reflect it over the x-axis, then we put our negative out in front, and then there's no other shifts or anything. I left space in case there was a b value, but it's just 1, so we don't need that. Um, and so the, maybe the best way to write this, g of theta is equal to negative 5 sine of theta plus that's a plus pi. That's cool. Okay, um, what are the transformations done to the parent function so that f of x equals cosine of 2 theta plus pi? Well, the very first thing we need to always remember to do is factor out the b value. Okay, so this can be written as f of theta is equal to cosine of 2 times theta plus, what would it be to get a pi? It would be pi over 2. Okay, so what were the transformations? It would have a um, well, we have a new period of 2 pi over 2 is equal to pi. We have a new period of pi. So this was had a um, horizontal dilation of a factor of 1 half. And then we shifted to the left pi over 2. I don't feel like writing that down. You heard me, right? Okay. Um, oh, my eyes, you guys. This is just not fun. I think this says 2.5. And then this would be at... So this is, I think... If I'm reading this correctly, this is the point 2 comma 2.5. And this, to me, looks like it's the point 1 comma um, negative 2.5. Okay, so write this equation. Ooh, we're going to write it as sine and cosine. Now, the easy way to begin here is to make this one period of cosine. Okay, so what we have done is we now have a period of 2. We've done everything we need to do within 2. So our 2 pi over b is now equal to 2. So I have 2 pi is equal to 2b or not 2b. <laughs> okay. Um, so that means divide both sides by 2, I get pi is equal to b. Um, yes, b is equal to pi is what I meant to say, but it works the same way. And now my amplitude is, um, is uh, 2.5. So I've gone, so that's my a value is 2.5. Or, well, or we know that the absolute value of a is 2.5. Um, and then on this one, if, if I think of this as my little cosine piece, and it starts here and does that, cosine always starts at the top and does this. So my one equation I could write is that f of, okay, we'll practice using theta, even though that's not in my nature, is a positive 2.5 since it starts at the top um, times cosine of the b value was pi times theta. And we didn't have a shift left or right, and we didn't have a shift up or down. And so you put that in parentheses, I guess. And then there we go. That's the cosine value. The other option, okay, so now we also want to practice writing it um, as a sine function. Well, the way that I like to see a sine function is it starts in the middle, it goes up, it comes down, it comes back, and it comes, ends up here. So on this one, I think that's the point, uh, one point, negative, this is negative 0.5 or negative 1 half. Okay, so we have shifted our graph to the left that much, um, but we still have an amplitude, so this would f of theta or whatever, it's still 2.5 sine of, well, the b value is pi, and I don't actually need these parentheses, but I wrote it because I was imitating the previous one, but whatever. Um, and then it's theta, I want to move to the left, so I have to say plus, how much did I want to move? One half, and there we go. There was no shift up or down. We've taken care of the amplitude. We've taken care of the b value that w because of our, our period here is still 2. Um, and, but we did have to have a shift so that this could be a sine function. That's fun. OK, let's look at this next one. Oh, dear, my eyes. You guys, I think I need glasses. Don't tell anybody. OK. Um, it looks like this is, I'm going to say that this is the point 1, 4, and that this is the point. Well, this is at, the midline's here at 1, so, oh, that's 0, so 0, positive 1, 2, and I think this is at 3. I'm saying this is at 3, 4, 
So hopefully that's correct, but whatever. Um, and then this is going through the point um, 0, 1. And then down here, we're saying this is the point 1, negative 2. So um, one day I'll report back that I have glasses, but I'm just too embarrassed. No, I'm just, <laughs> whatever, it's fine. Okay, um, so here, this one, the points that I just plotted make a beautiful cosine curve. Um, so we can use that and say f of theta is equal to our amplitude. We go from 1 up to 4, so that amplitude is 3. We're starting at the top, so we don't need to... Um, if we started at the bottom, we'd need to make it negative and then go something like that because we would have reflected it. Um, 3... I think I have other videos on how to write the equation. I'll, I'll try and find them and link them. Um, okay, now I also need my period. So how long did it take us... Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. Did you catch it? Did anybody catch it? I know I see it. This is negative one. Okay. Um, from negative one to three, we have a period of four, which is going to be equal to two pi over b. So four b equals two pi. Divide two pi over four reduces to pi over two. So our b value is pi over two, but we do have to shift back one. So this becomes a theta plus one, and we also have to shift up because our midline is at one. So that's plus one. Okay, the other as a sine curve, oh, you know what, let's use green. Um, it's going to equal, we still have 3 as our amplitude. I may start, where do I want to start? I could start anywhere. I could start here and go up. Let's start here just so that we can move it to the right this time. I think this would be the point 2, comma 1. Hopefully I'm correct. Uh, it matches what I need to do, so that's good. Um, we still have the same B value, theta, and if I want to move to the right, I make this minus 2, and I still have to shift up 1. Um, on all of these, I could start, and I, can, I have infinitely many choices. So when I have historically asked my kids to write these problems, I, on my answer key, I would say write it as sine and cosine. And then I would write three versions of the cosine one and three versions of the sine so that I wouldn't have to think about your work. <laughs> if you don't match one of my three, um, then odds are you're wrong. <laughs> Not necessarily, but odds are. Okay, um, we're going to get into tangent in the next video, so come back for that.